A signal audit has been performed, but is it secure? Use OAuth to sign in. It might open up your apps to account hijacking and much, much more. Coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, November 15, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Good news for our patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. We are now offering an exclusive Patreon-only audio feed of ThreatWire. You can copy our RSS link into your favorite podcasting app to listen to our show offline now. You fund the making of the show, so thank you for letting us bring you security news every single week. Signal is a popular encrypted text messaging app for mobile devices, and the protocol for Signal is also used in Facebook's Messenger, WhatsApp, and Google's new Allo app. With any platform that boasts security, you want to know that it's actually secure by way of open source code or known auditing by security professionals and researchers. With this protocol being used by over 1 billion active people worldwide, it is very important in this case too. Luckily, Signal was recently audited by researchers on three different continents who found that there are no major flaws in the signal encryption code. The analysis was completed by researchers from the University of Oxford in the UK, Queensland University of Technology in Australia, and McMaster University in Canada. They determined that even in a unique environment where a hacker could be watching traffic and analyzing it, the signal messages would still be secret and authentication for each party would still hold. Signal uses ratcheting forward secrecy, which is a concept of encryption where the key exchange between two different contexts continuously up updates during a conversation. So this also means that older conversations can't be compromised with new keys. Now while this is a really terrible one-liner explanation, I know it is, you can go read the entire explanation on Open Whisper Systems blog, which is linked below. The study did not include third-party implementations, nor did it include group messaging, message sharing across multiple devices, or voice and video call security. So there is definitely some more auditing to be done, but this is a very positive start. Three security researchers from the University of Hong Kong gave a talk at Black Hat EU this month regarding details of an OAuth exploit that could expose more than 1 billion accounts to possible hijacking. OAuth 2.0 is used by tons of different kind of apps to allow a user to securely log in with their Google or their Facebook login information, for example. This is convenient because you wouldn't have to create a new account for an app. It's just authenticating you via your already made accounts on other providers' websites. But OAuth 2.0 has no standard set forth for implementation of security, so the researchers looked at 600 top apps and found 41.2% of them were vulnerable to an attack. Using the researchers' exploit, they were able to log into a victim's account using the OAuth 2.0 vulnerability and have access to any and all details inside of the app. They used a man-in-the-middle proxy to sniff traffic between the app's server and a victim's device, allowing them to capture and spoof a user's ID. The researchers have recommended some fixes to the app devs that they can implement to help with the problem in their paper, which is also linked below. Okay, I realize 2016 is not quite over yet, but can we just call this the largest hack of the year? According to a post by LeakedSource.com, the adult dating network of sites called Friend Finder Network was hacked just last month with over 400 million accounts, usernames, passwords, and email addresses being included in the breach. Some dating back to the late 1990s. Yeah, that's like 20 years worth. So many accounts that were supposedly deleted were also found in the leak of data. So they weren't actually gone. Yeah, they were still there. Mm -hmm. So sites include adultfriendfinder.com, cams.com, penthouse.com, amongst others. And for Friend Finder network users, I would just recommend changing your passwords and be on the lookout for any potential signs that your data was leaked. Whew. Okay, so we don't get political on this show. We merely discuss the security, privacy, and internet freedom laws that are currently being enacted in the world, especially in the US. Uh, so with regards to Trump, now while we are unable to see into the future, we can share some insight into recent hacks. Six hours after Trump was announced as the US president-elect, a Russian-led hacking group called the Dukes, who was also involved in hacks of the DNC, were found sending spear phishing emails targeted at non-government organizations and political think tanks with bodies of text such as 
find out what really happened during the elections, and shocking truths about the election rigging, etc. If a user were to open one of these attachments, they'd be targeted with a Trojan made to give the attacker access to their data. But what does the US election and Donald Trump's win mean for privacy and security advocates across the globe, not just phishing attacks from Russian groups? While a Republican-run government could be disastrous for any progressive changes recently made in the privacy fields in the United States, the problem that we are faced with is not knowing the truth. There have been tweet storms about net neutrality being bad for media. A uh, boycott against Apple for denying the FBI access to a terrorist iPhone have definitely happened, but we do not yet know what kind of regulations Donald Trump will plan for his presidency, because well-written proposals are far and few in between. As privacy advocates ourselves, we can offer some advice. Now would be a good time to do your due diligence with your own privacy and security and consider becoming an active member of privacy focused groups, as well as paying very close attention to the actions of the government for the next four years. We could be in for a lot of changes or not, time will tell. But I will not be sitting around twiddling my thumbs while those changes are made. Thank you again for being patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net, as well as your own fur baby in our show. They really brought up my spirits this week, so thank you so much for sending in your fur baby pictures. By becoming a patron, you will also get access to our patron-only MP3 RSS feed of the show, which is super cool. If everyone that watches the show donates a dollar per month, we would successfully cover all of our fees, like rent and electricity, plus we'll be able to put a lot of more time into this show so that we can do upgrades and bring you more content every week. If you cannot contribute, give it show a thumbs up or you can subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. Of course, I would love to see this show get tons of likes, so if you can hit that like button, that does help us with YouTube analytics. And of course, you can find all of our episodes linked to our social networks and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.